What's up, everybody? Are you ready to code? All right, let's get started. So today I'm going to show you how to easily blur an HTML element and still have elements inside that element that aren't blurred. And we'll do that using the CSS3 filter blur um, property. So let's get started right away. We're going to start off with some HTML structure. We'll create a div. We'll call it a container. And inside this container, we'll create another div. That'll be the stuff that we don't blur. We'll blur the actual container itself here in a minute. And then inside of here, we'll just put some text inside of the span to say some text here. Great. Now, all we have is our HTML structure in place. Let's get started on the CSS. This is the heftier part of the uh, walkthrough here. We're going to set up our HTML first and just um, kind of set up our width and height because this is going to be a large container with uh, that's going to take up the whole size of the page so we'll need to um, have the HTML even marked out to do both of those things with width and height. Height percent We're going to do something slightly different. I know I can do the comma thing here too but we're just going to do these separate for now. All right, now let's talk to our container. Our container is going to be the element that takes up the space of the body itself, and it's going to have the background image on it. So first, let's set up our background size. We'll go all the way to background size, and we want cover. This is really just so that the image flexes well with the size of the window. We'll do background image. And mine is called jungle. I have an image stored. If you have one stored locally, awesome. Or go get a new image, that's great too. We're going to set position to relative because that's going to affect how we um, have the blurred element and the non blurred stuff inside of the container at the same time. So position relative, we'll say width also 100%, take up the whole width of the body, height 100% as well. One more thing is overflow hidden. We're doing overflow hidden because we want it to um, cut off the edges so that we can expand the blur beyond that. Because if you blur an element, an HTML element, it can actually feather in on the sides and so it doesn't fully blur everything. And so this overflow hidden is going to make it so that we can stretch the blurred element of the container and get the edges to not feather on us. All right, so now we're going to do container and use the selector of after. This is kind of a, a CSS magic trick of sorts. We're going to set content to empty. This really just sets it up almost as if we are putting another div there. Um, after just lets us talk to another element of the element, so to speak. So we're just speaking to a different section of the container. I'm going to say width. I'm going to set this above. I'll just say 103 because we're getting beyond the feather there because if we don't do this, we'll get a bit of a feathered edge on the um, element itself. And that's why we're over using overflow hidden is to cut that edge off a bit. Okay, so now we're going to inherit from the background. So we use background and we'll just inherit. We're just taking from this element right here so that we can inherit what it's already doing and blur it without creating an additional div. Okay, so now we'll do position absolute. Now that's making it different from this one in that we're then able to use a Z index to keep elements inside of here at a higher layer without creating an additional div. Do finish that one and then top zero, just setting up our top and our left. We're actually gonna put it like negative 10 pixels. I know that's a hard code number. We don't usually like to stick with those. But this is just going to get that feathered edge off the side for us. You can play with that number. You can remove it. You'll see the feather there if you take that off. So just play with those numbers. And uh, there's a way to clean that up just a little bit. Okay, we're going to use filter. This is where we'll apply our blur. We'll just use a simple 10 pixel blur on our actual element there. And there we go. We have that one all set up. The next thing we're going to do is just set up our inside. So this inside element here we're just going to add a couple of things to uh, make it 
act well inside of this container because we're actually blowing the containers after, not the actual container itself, but also we're making the inside come off of that just a bit so that it doesn't blur. So we'll say inside, and on inside we'll set it position relative, and, oops, position relative and Z index at one. The reason for doing this will bring the elements inside of that container to the top so that they sit up at the top. And there you have it. So what we've done here is we've created a container. We're able to put things inside of the container that we're blurring because we're blurring its actual after selector. Now watch when we select here and there you have it. There's our text on top of it. There's our blurred jungle image in the background, and we didn't have to create an additional div next to it. We did the div inside of it because we were selecting the after selector in CSS. Thanks for watching my video. Please be sure to subscribe to TechUDad Digital for more awesome tutorials on code, and also check out techudad.com where I'll frequently post the code for my tutorials.